In this video, we are going to take the concepts we learned last video and apply them to our demo. My name is Oliver Eberlei and you're watching the Sky Arena Photon Tutorial. Since the structure of the ship is a bit involved, let's go over it for a second before talking about how we synchronize it over the network. There are six components that define the behavior of the ship. Ship is the main class that handles data like health and the team the ship belongs to. This is also the class that is observed by Photon. Ship movement handles how the ship moves in the world. It also handles all the positional updates from the synchronized ships. Ship input looks for the player input either from keyboard and mouse or from a gamepad. It then passes all the data on to the other classes so they can react to the user input. Ship visuals deal with how the ship looks. For example, the smoke effect is enabled here when the ship is damaged. It also handles all the rolling of the ship for upside down maneuvers. Since navigating a ship through 3D space is an involved mathematical operation, I made sure that the rolling doesn't affect the movement at all. It's just easier to handle this way. Ship shooting receives the shoot commands from the ship input class and handles creation and destruction of the projectiles. While a ship collision looks for collisions with the environment and deals with them as they occur. Collision with the projectiles themselves is handled by the projectiles. Since all of these components are referencing each other all the time, I made my life a little bit easier by creating the superclass ship base, which all these components inherit from. Ship base just defines all the cross references so I can access each ship related component through a property. As I've said before, ship is the component observed by the photon view, therefore, it has the on photon serialized view method defined. However, since the ship behavior is spread over several different components, I also need to send variables from multiple components over the network. I've created a serialized state method for each component that has to send or receive data. The name is made up, so this is not a required way to do this, but it keeps the data nicely separated in each respective component. The serialized state method gets the same parameters as the onPhoton serialized view method does, and I simply call all serialized state methods from the onPhoton serialized view. Notice how the ship class has a serialized state method itself, since it needs to synchronize how much health each ship has. I could have just written that code in onPhoton serialized view, but it's more consistent to put it in its own serialized state method. Since ship only needs to synchronize the ship's health, the method is very simple and perfectly shows how serialization works in Photon. First, I check if stream.isWriting is true. If it is, that means the method is called on the client who owns the ship and therefore we have to attach the data to the stream by calling send next. If isWriting is false, it means that we are not the owner of the ship and we are receiving data. We simply read the help value that has been sent by calling receive next. Since we know that we are receiving health and health is a float, we can safely cast the receive object to a float and store it in the ship's health variable. The second serialized state method we call is from the component ship visuals. It too only has to synchronize one variable, the ship's roll angle. But we are doing something slightly different here. Since we are only calling on photon serialized view 10 times a second, there would be a noticeable stutter if we immediately set the roll to the received value. The ship is supposed to roll very smoothly, so we are storing the received roll in a temporary variable. We then interpolate the current roll angle towards the roll angle stored in that temp variable. If you think about it, this means the synchronized roll angles are always lagging behind a little bit. But since this is just a visual representation that doesn't influence the gameplay at all, it doesn't really matter. When dealing with networking, you are always using smoke and mirrors to give the illusion that all players see the exact same thing. But unless instant internet with zero ping is invented, this is never going to happen. In the case of the roll angle, this isn't really a problem. But we can't get away with such a simple solution when dealing with the ship's position. The last serialized state method we are calling is from the component ship movement. This is where it gets really interesting. The serialized state method of ship movement itself does nothing special. Just like the other methods before, it sends a few variables through the pipe and receives them if necessary. The interesting bit is what we do with those variables once we get them. The first two are the position and rotation of the ship. Just like the roll angle before, we store them in temporary variables. The next variable is speed. We can set that directly since it's not that noticeable if speed doesn't change smoothly. Also, we need the most current speed at all times to have a more accurate prediction where the ship actually is. More on that in a second. The last variable is a simple boolean that states if the ship is upside down or not. The players can do loopings and abort them after only half of a revelation, so they can end up upside down. Since we want the ship to roll right side up again, we need to know if it's upside down or not. And finally, we save the timestamp of the photo message info. 
Note that we are not saving the current timestamp of the local simulation, which would be photonetwork.time, but the timestamp of when the package was sent. When we get this data, it is already out of date and we need to know when the receive position was correct so that we can determine where the player actually is at this moment. This is called prediction and you'll have to deal with prediction a lot when you're working on multiplayer games. Depending on the game, you can create a better or worse prediction model based on the data that you have. For Sky Arena, it is actually pretty easy to predict where the player is, since we know when the ship was at a certain position and how fast it was going. Therefore, we just move the ship along the same direction at the same speed until we get newer information from the server. This happens 10 times a second, so the inconsistencies between our prediction and what is really happening are pretty small. It's also helpful that the player cannot make any sudden movements like in a jump and run for example. Even if the player changes directions very suddenly, the ship's movements are still smooth because of its inertia. It also helps that the collider of the laser is quite big, so you only have to shoot in the general direction of a player to hit him. If shooting had to be more precise, like for example if you do a sniper rifle in a first person shooter, this problem would be much more pronounced and difficult to handle. Let's talk about how the prediction model is applied. If you take a look at the update function of ship movement, you see that there is a check if photonview.isMine equals to true. Basically what we do here is to check if this particular ship is our own ship. If it is, we simulate all its movements locally based on the user's input. If it's not our ship, however, we use the previously received temporary position and rotation to determine the ship's actual transformation. The rotation is easy, since it also doesn't really matter if it's 100% correct. So we simply rotate the ship slowly towards the rotation we received, just like we did with the roll angle. The position, however, has to implement our prediction model. Every time we receive a position, the ship has already moved forward a bit. Depending on how long ago we received the last update, we have to move the ship further and further along to give the illusion that it's still flying forward. If we wouldn't do that, the ship would jump forward in small increments every time a new update is received. This is where the ping comes into play. If you have played an online game before, you've probably noticed that some games show each user's ping in the leaderboards. You may have also noticed that the higher your own ping is, the more difficult it gets to hit anybody. This is because the ping tells you how long it takes for data to travel from you to the server and back. This is also why it's called the round trip time. So the higher your ping is, the later you receive the position updates for all the other players. For example, if your ping is 200 milliseconds and your enemy's ping is 100 milliseconds, it would take about 50 milliseconds for a position update to be sent from the enemy to the server and roughly 100 milliseconds for it to arrive on your machine. Basically, once you receive the position update, it is already 150 milliseconds out of date. Depending on how fast or twitchy your game is, this is the big problem. Since we know how high the ping is, we can try to estimate how far the enemy has traveled in the last 150 milliseconds and therefore are able to show a more accurate position of the enemy ship. However, since prediction is always just an estimate, it gets more and more imprecise the bigger your ping is. As I've said before, in case of Sky Arena it is actually quite easy to predict where the player is. We simply calculate how much time has passed since the last update we received, we add our round trip time on top of that, and then move the ship forward based on the total amount of time passed. By adding the round trip time, we are calculating the position where the enemy probably is right now if the speed and turning angle haven't changed. Of course, the speed and turning angle probably have changed in that time, but since we received these updates 10 times a second, we just update our prediction as soon as new data arrives. These imperfections in our prediction model will result in tiny jumps as the prediction is updated with new data. And that is why we have smoothly moved the ship towards its estimated position by calling vector3.move toward. This still results in imperfections though. If you start the game two times and try to fly the two ships next to each other, you'll notice that you will not be able to fly them exactly next to each other on both games. But since the game is so fast and people are moving all over the place when they're in a dogfight, you don't notice these small differences. Our prediction is accurate enough so that players are still able to shoot each other. But again, if you're working on a 2D platformer for example, this would be much more noticeable since you will never be able to predict correctly when a player is going to jump. Depending on what type of game you're looking at, you'll find that there are vastly different prediction methods and tricks to hide latency. A game like StarCraft 2 has a completely different approach to this problem than Counter-Strike or our own Sky Arena. You can find a lot of interesting materials about different approaches on the internet. And I will put some of my favorite articles in the description so you can check them out if you're interested in learning more about this stuff. 
Just be warned, this is a very deep rabbit hole. That's it for this episode. In the next video, we are going to talk about remote procedure calls, which are used if specific events are happening. For example, if you shoot a laser or grab the enemy flag. So see you over there.